Welcome to Topple Uncaged. I'm Steve Topple and you're locked on to the UK's hottest politics and music podcast. Each week, I bring you the rawest takes on the big stories making the news, always joined by a very special guest. Then, I pleasure your mind, body and soul with the freshest, most banging international music going. Judge, you be there to bless and guide. My goodness, my guest on today's podcast is interesting to say the least. Wow, he has made the move from an international cricketing superstar to becoming an international music star in his own right. Absolutely fascinating journey, but we'll get into that later. More fascinating about this supremely talented man is the musical intricacy intricacy that he does his music is this wonderfully rich diverse mix of styles fantastic orchestration fantastic composition production top notch um just this gorgeous gorgeous package of an artist and i'm extremely excited to have him on because he's recently released two new tracks both are fire both are completely different as well but we'll talk some more about that but moreover it's a real privilege to be able to introduce for the first time on this podcast the listeners the very 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 talented and the very nice already i've been chatting to him briefly off air the brilliant amari banks amari thank you so much for coming on the show it is really really exciting to have you on because i've got loads i want to ask you so cheers for coming on thank you Happy to be on, man. It's always a pleasure to talk to people who are passionate about music and um and I mean say, say, say a passion and a love for for the things that I do. And um yeah, man, I'm happy and looking forward to really talking to you and getting into uh, my music, my past, and, and just sharing with yourself and all the, your your listeners um about what Omari Banks is about. Excellent, sounds good and passionate. Yeah, if you see me bouncing up and down, you know that I'm quite excited. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's absolutely great to have you on. We have to we have to touch on your kind of journey from being an international um, cricket star for the West Indies to to being an international musician. I mean, it's 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 quite a it's quite. I've never had anyone on the show actually who's gone from kind of the world of sport to the world of music, and it's very very interesting. I mean, how did this all come about to you? Because you were renowned um, cricket player, um, extremely successful, and then you make the transition into music, and you make the transition extremely smoothly and extremely successfully. I mean, how did this how did this transition and this move into music come about for you? Well, for me, I mean, my story is kind of unique in the sense that. Um, I've been around music kind of my entire life. Um, my dad is a gentleman by the name of Banky Banks, who's a well-known um, musician on Ireland as well as internationally. Um, so my environment that I grew up in, I grew up with seeing a lot of musicians come inside the house, outside the house. I grew up seeing my dad um, um, prepare a music festival, which is called Moon Splash, which is actually the longest privately owned music festival in the Eastern Caribbean. Um, so I've seen that from the infancy of a festival to now being recognized as a, a, a well-renowned festival. Um, and just the fact that having a talent from a very early age, I had the talent to be able to sing. Um, I would take part in talent shows and, um, and being a school choir, I was always the lead singer. Um, I, I was exposed to instruments from a very early age. So I had that kind of background where I was always around music. And um, I, I consider myself blessed to... To, to be able to, to, to be in that environment. And then, you know, every kid growing up in um, the English-speaking Caribbean especially, um, you, you play sport as well. So having a, having the, the dream to play for the West Indies team was something which I had from a very early age. So I guess I, I'm, I'm one of the lucky people who, who can can say, I mean, you had two dreams and you kind of kind of were able to, was able to kind of fulfill both of them in some regard. That, that, you, 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 you're spot on. That is really lucky. That's absolutely well. No, it's not luck, Mari. Obviously, it's pure talent, my friend, is what it is. Of course, um, but that is that is really interesting. Yeah, I mean, quite not even just talent, but a lot of quite a lot of hard work that's involved. I mean, 
I think, especially with my music, I think what I try to do as well is inspire people as much as I could. Uh, my message is, is is very wholesome, and I and I try to sing songs which I feel is reflective of me as well as kind of reflective of what, how I see as 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 people should be living with each other. And um, I mean, it's um, hard work is a, is a big part of that. I think that it's important that people put their put effort into whatever their passion is. And as I said before, I've, I've been blessed to be able to follow my passions, work re- extremely hard, but as, as well been blessed um, by, by the Almighty for, with with some talents, which um, I'm really happy to be able to pursue as well. No, absolutely. I'm just I'm just interested. What sort of brought you to the decision to do the cricket first? Then what was was that sort of where you were more moving towards at the time? Was it a conscious decision to do do cricket first? Yeah, it definitely was a conscious decision because, I mean, growing up, everybody, most of the people thought I would go into music because my dad was doing that. Um, but I think a lot in a lot of ways, because my dad was doing it, I, I love music, but maybe at that age, I, I, I thought that I wanted to do something different to what he was doing. You know, you know, sometimes I would, my mom would have me sometimes practicing for hours, um, like pre- preparing for a show or something like that. And when I got to the age of maybe like 12, 13, I mean, I won quite a bit of talent shows, but I just got to the point where I think I wanted to do something different. And I was, I was always good at sports. Another part of it is that I, I spent, because my dad would travel and tour a lot, my mother as well was somebody who traveled quite a bit. I spent a bit of time with my uncle, um, Val Banks, who was actually a, a, a cricketer as well. He was like a, a farmer cricketer from Anguilla. So in a lot of ways, I, I kind of did what I was around as well. Um, and then I fell in love with the game of cricket, I would say maybe about eight nine years old although I was playing a little bit before and and from that age really it became like my obsession to cook to kind of um, play for West Indies I'd be the first person from Anguilla to do to, to play for West Indies and and I mean I, I carried on doing um, cricket and music until I was I would say 14 years old but like like anything if you want to do professionally um, when I got to the age of about 14 15 I kind of made a decision that music was going to have to be on the back burner and the focus was was my cricket um i would come over to the uk from 14 15 years old train in academies train at um leicestershire train in warwickshire um and come back in the caribbean and, and play cricket as well um but so i mean it was a conscious decision definitely from a very early age that i wanted to to, to pursue the cricket thing as 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 a at, a, at an international level yeah, I had uh, I had Jameer Morgan on the show a few weeks ago, obviously of Morgan Heritage, um, and he was discussing about the, the, the fact that obviously with his family and who they are and and what they've done in the music industry, especially that yeah, it was it was kind of a strange kind of. It, he, there was t- times of uncertainty for him whether to even pursue a music career because of the fact his father's obviously Gramps Morgan and and that, uh, the whole heritage that comes with his name and his his family and that it was kind of it was at times a difficult difficult decision for him. Um, but I think I mean I'm extremely glad you have now got into the music because it, absolutely fantastic artist. I mean your voice is you have this, this delicious voice which manages to cross between this kind of middling to upper baritone tone then into the full full tenor range and it's wonderfully rich as well there's a real you, there's a real soul to your voice that you don't often find with artists who sort of are necessarily more grounded in reggae i mean you immediately put me in mind as soon as i put you on you remind me of stevie wonder completely absolutely that it's just not only the sort of timbre of your voice and the tone of your voice but the way you phrase your lyrics as well um and and the sort of the flow of your voice immediately stevie wonder absolutely gorgeous 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 voice um but moreover as well musically absolutely ingenious i mean your your latest two tracks which are brilliant half full or half empty and another track which is you're gonna make it are kind of perfect examples of the way you can diversify your style especially half full or half empty i have to rave about this track because it's absolutely brilliant the musical arrangement is is stunning you've got you've got the bubble pattern going on so you kind of it takes you into reggae territory but then 
you kind of get a feeling of this funky soul because the horn section and the arrangement of that is that very kind of sort of 70s feeling um, of, of funky soul and also on the percussion as well. Then the guitars are almost a bit bluesy in some of the riffs they're doing and you can't quite box it in. You, you want to say it's reggae, but then it's kind of where well, there's funky soul. And then there's kind of elements of very bluesy kind of a vibe going on. Um, and that sums you up. You can't bloody box you in, Amari, which I think is absolutely, absolutely fantastic. We'll talk about, I said to you off air, I want to talk about Sunlight and we'll come on to that in a bit. That was your 2017 album. We'll talk about it in a little bit. But where does this, this musical diversity come from? Because you are this whole kind of blend of, of styles. Where is, where is that from in you? Is it just your own taste? or is it growing up or what is it it comes from my upbringing it comes from a, a bit of my dad it comes from the, the the influences i had as a child um so from as a child growing up i sang in church i um i, I grew up singing a lot of soulful music as well so i i would i was would sing a lot of ballads so whether it be um luther vandross i would sing even this, this stevie wonder stuff you know what i mean um, and and I, I was always in, in inspired and, and I was drawn to songs with a message as well as song, songs with, of crooners, you know, that kind of way. I mean, the, the Bob Marley and that I, I always enjoyed as well. But I looked outside of the, the, the what should I say, the, the things which were just um, you, Caribbean stuff and because I, I wanted to. I don't know if it's just that I wanted to, but just so I was around it because of the environment. And I, and I really gravitated to that. I mean, especially music, which had a lot of guitar. Uh, so even now when I'm, when I'm, when I'm listening to music, majority of the time, even when I'm home, I'm out, I'm actually listening to a lot of guitar music, a lot of different styles of music. And then I, I kind of put that into a flavor, which I find best um, kind of represents me. Um, reggae music is, is, is a Caribbean music. It's a, it's a, it's a global music, but, Ultimately, I think that's the music which I think still can be, you can stay organic to the, the live instrumentation. Um, in, in, when I say reggae music, not necessarily not dance on music, but the traditional roots reggae music. And that's why I, I prefer even to, 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 what should I say, to communicate in that, in that style and then add all the other influences, um, which, 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 which I love so dearly uh, within my music. So for me, I've been, I'll say again, I've been blessed to be able to, have been in an environment to to to, to open up my musical mind. Um, I've, I've, I've worked with a lot of musicians and seen a lot of musicians come inside and outside my house. So I've been blessed to see a lot of different styles of music, whether it been from folk music to soul music to blues music. My, my dad has a blues festival, um, reggae festival, and I've seen John Mayer perform here in Anguilla at my dad's festival. So, I mean, this is years ago, but even before that. So I've for me, music is 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 just uh, 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 my music is just uh, a, com- a combination of, of the things that I love. Uh, I think a genre. I don't like to, to put myself in a particular genre because, especially with music nowadays, if if you if it's if it becomes commercial, it's almost like they want to put you in, in one particular area. But I believe, to me, music is expression, and um, if you're looking to express yourself. Um, I think it's it's limitless. Um, you, you take in the influences which are around you, and then you just tr- try to regurgitate that into something which you feel represents you, and that's what I try to do. And you do it perfectly, and uh, I love the fact they do. I don't, I don't, and I don't understand it. It really actually annoys me the way that so many music journalists and people within the industry do try. You have to, they have to pigeonhole you into. Well, he's either reggae, or he's doing dancehall, or or he's doing um, soul, or whatever, 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 whatever. And it's almost sometimes I think they must be tone deaf because they're not listening to the same music I am. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> because <laughs> so many artists are not just boxed in in this one category they're almost their music is always almost the sum of their musical life experiences and do, do you know what i mean and it, I, I find it very annoying exactly uh, yeah i mean and that's why i think yeah what we got to get back to especially with music and i hope we get back to that at some point in time where people and in, and in, in we i mean with the internet i mean you have a lot more freedom where you're able to to push out music and you can go directly to the to your fan base and i think that's what i try to do even when it comes to even my, my distribution and stuff like that i work with a lot of um people uh, uh agencies who understand the scope of what i'm trying to do you know what i mean who don't try to push me say okay this is what we have to do and this but no i believe that people know what they love so my fans know what they love to hear from me i don't need to be told by 
a big company. This is what you have to pick because this is what's hot. Because a lot of time, they're just telling you there's a particular agenda behind that. So for me, I think it's it's important. Exactly. It's important for me to, to push out there the music, which I feel um, best represents me. Um, and as I grow within my musical taste and and and, 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 and feel, I, I push that out. But that, I think art, and the fact that the art is art is about expression. And for me, I ultimately, I want to express music and I want to connect with the people who can understand what I'm trying to, to, to push out there. No, I think and I think it's the best way to approach it. To be honest, is is to if you can sort of move aside from the main corporate companies and as you say, just connect with your fans who are going to love your music regardless of whether someone sitting in a press office in I don't know Washington or Miami or whatever wants to call you a reggae artist. And this is and it's a brilliant development that we've seen in the age of streaming and download and social media that you can have that direct link now with the people who do love you know love your music. I think no brilliant brilliant comment. And I think regarding um, not being boxed in, I have to say, you're, you're, it was 2017, wasn't it? You released Sunlight, which was your second album. Is that correct? Yeah. It's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant example of how you have not been boxed in. I mean, I, I have to talk about it because it's a superb piece of work and superb project. I don't want to call it an album. It's a project, superb project. I mean, the, the, the it covers all sorts of different musical styles and it's also intricately done, but um, cleverly done and and musically very delicate but the performances from all the artists the musicians that feature on it is absolutely superb but but it, it's this blend of styles which it stands out for me i mean you start off with the title track which is sunlight which okay so you put it on and you can hear the bubble pattern going on in the background but it's it's so much more than that it's it's this gloriously arranged track which has elements of kind of I, I might be wrong in this, but it kind of elements of almost electronic dance music in it because you've got these sort of synth strings going on, which are on this kind of rapid fire kind of riff. But then you've got a kind of bluesy bass um, on the lick as well. And it, it sums up the rest of the album because it, it can't be pinned down musically. Um, you then go on to a track like Reggae Summertime, which ironically is not actually kind of reggae really at all. You have got, you've got the bubble pattern going on, haven't you? But I was immediately sort of transported to the sort of Isley Brothers because it's that kind of um, almost Caribbean soul kind of feeling and you've got an R&B bass and... Um, it, reggae summertime it's not actually that much reggae naturally is more reggae the track naturally that that is more we're back to roots aren't we there um it is it's reggae with sort of elements of pop then you go into track like admire which is kind of lover's rock i got that from it with the with the kind of gospel solely choir backing vocals and a bit of scar to it as well reggae sometimes like a reggae a scar kind of vibe yeah scar Mm -hmm. yeah no absolutely you then move into completely different territory with some sort of R&B soul ballads like Me and You, gorgeous track, absolutely beautiful. And then you finish off the album with a completely mind-blowing track, Now That You're Two, which is just completely stripped back, you and a guitar line, showcasing, showcasing your talent and especially your voice superbly. I mean, the whole project is fantastic and I, I can't wait for you to do another bloody album, actually. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm on the, on the, in the process of doing right now. I've actually recorded four or five songs from a new project that I'm working on right now, and I'm actually going to be heading to Jamaica actually tomorrow. I'm going to, have to do a, a a press run and meet a few fans as well as a few TV appearances and performances, as well as do some work in studio. So I've already started to work on the new material. I'm really excited because with with every album, it's like your baby, and um and you're excited to to give your fans and friends and new music as well as you're excited to, to 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 show the people who listen to you the growth which you've made from one album to the next i'm really excited about that excellent when are you thinking of dropping that just out of interest i've got to, i'll speak to my like big up my like but i'm thinking maybe spring next year i just well before just just after winter you, you guys time or spring next year i mean i'm, I'm going to be going to the studio now and then we have to take a bit of time in terms of promotions and hopefully by that time I can make a, a run over to you guys in, in the UK. Yes, please. That'd be excellent. Thank you very much. Lovely. We'll get you booked in straight away. If you want to go and grab yourself a tea, coffee or any other kind of refreshment, do so now because me and Amari will be back in just a few seconds. 
that sounds excellent. I'm really excited that you're doing a new album because if, if Sunlight was anything to go by, then it's going to be absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And as I say, I mean, it, it, the album itself was a perfect encapsulation of, of your diversity and your musical intricacy and delicateness as an, as an artist. Um, you, you mentioned your father, um, Banky Banks, huge Anguillan artist, um, world-renowned work. We, didn't he work with Bob Dylan? Did I read that right? Yeah, correct. He worked with Bob Dylan as well as Bob Dylan lent him his boat and he did his first tour. Um, yeah, he traveled around the Caribbean on Bob Dylan's boat and they hang out. I think they did a few recordings together. That's that's even before I was born. So yeah, I mean that's his good buddy. I think Bob Dylan used to play one couple of his songs when when he was on tour. Uh, one of my dad's songs, one that's called Prince of Darkness. So yeah, the, the history is there. So yeah, I'm I'm just happy to continue that. That, that long history of music and good vibe and good energy, which you can get from authentic and genuine music. I mean, did, did your father's extremely illustrious career, did, did that sort of influence and, and um, sort of shape the way you wanted to be in an artist? Has your father influenced you sort of quite heavily in terms of being a, being a musician? What I would say is, I mean, I, I I was in the environment. I mean, I think he has his style and my style, is, I would say, even is a, is a little bit different. But I think what I got a lot from my dad is a lot of the ethics of um, of how he goes about his music. Music should be something should be that should be felt. Um, it should be authentic, and those are the things for me. I mean, he's got his story, and then I've got my story. My story started in sport. I'm over to music now. I have the principles which I feel govern my life and and govern what I what I want to sing about, and and he's has his as well. So the principle of what he sings is, a, is his story, and I think my story. And the influences I we have are are, are kind of similar, but I mean, obviously, I grew up in a different generation, so I, I will have a little bit uh, some some other stuff which which he may not have in his music. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, but it's the the, the influence is definitely there. As my dad, I mean, I always looked up to my dad for what he did in, in, within music and 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 the love for the stage, and, and I always watch how he performs and communicates with you know I mean with his with his um through his music, I should say. And um, that's something which I've always admired and I always take lessons from of how, about how I approach my music and as well as my performances. And of course, both you and your father are flying the flag for Anguilla. I mean, it's it's fascinating country, not least musically as well, because again, it, it's it's like you. It's 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 got a, sort of this history of all different styles of music, from from reggae to calypso to more bluesy, solely elements. I mean, is is it important to you? Because you you did it as a cricketer, as you said, you were the first Anguillan cricketer um, ever to play for the West Indies. Um, it must be important to you to promote your your country, especially musically. You know, of course, of course. I mean, Angola is my home, and as I, as I said, growing up as a kid, it's always a passion. Um, in, in in Angola, we always say we want to put Angola on the map, and I'm happy that I did in, in my my first career, which is it's cricket, to be able to put Angola, do something to bring notoriety to Angola, and now that I'm in music, it's it's always a, a blessing to be able to to come full circle back around, and do something completely different, and have a have a, a impact on an international level as well. So. I see it as a blessing. Um, I see it as something which I'm very proud of, and um, I mean, I try to make sure that's in my music because I mean, for me, it's 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 a, it's about a message and the legacy that I leave um, within my music, and and I'm hoping that um, with every song that I write, I'm 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 I'm, I'm continuing to promote Anguilla. I'm continuing to promote myself, and at the end of the day, um, um, it's it's for the greater good of myself and my country. And also, I mean, what stands out in so much of your music, Amari, as well, is that a lot of it, a lot of it is very conscious. I mean, from tracks like Material Possessions to Second Chance to, again, one of your most recent ones, You're Gonna Make It. There is always a message. And also, also what I noticed, it's all very positive. And I love that. It's so nice to have just positivity exuding, even when you're tackling difficult subjects. Um, it, it, it's still extremely, extremely positive. It always, always leaves you feeling kind of, hopeful after listening to you which i think one of the main things that comes across from your music is is that feeling of hopefulness and positivity and that you know whatever situation you're in your life you can work through it and do it and that comes across wonderfully from your music i mean is it is is that a reflection of your own faith and your spirituality or your your outlook on life where does this kind of positivity and this dealing with conscious issues come from for you so, but exactly what you said. It's a bit. Of, it comes from the positivity one. From I've, I've always been someone who read a lot, 
a lot of motivational stuff as a, as a child, as well as it comes from a, from a spiritual level as well. I believe what we feed our minds with, um, we, we, we manifest. So um, I, I believe that's important. And I, I'm also, I live my life based on the premise that um, no matter what, what you're going through, I think ultimately if you have the right attitude, um, you can make, you can further your cause, so you can make it better. And I think that's important to, to give people hope because I think um, what, that's one of the most powerful things um, pe- for people to have hope that there'll be a better tomorrow because it gives you the, the, the energy, the, the, the strength to work for the, for the next day, you know what I'm saying? So I think whatever I do, I think it's important for me. I mean, as somebody who's been out there and, and experienced, um, traveled a lot, seen different places, cultures, and people, understand that wherever you go in the world, there are challenges. Um, but at the end of the day, it's how we approach those challenges and and, and, and try to encourage people who, who want better to, to try to do better. Um, so within my music, I, I try my best to to give people hope. You know what I'm saying? I mean, with and, and sometimes it's not... It's not what you say; it's how you say it. Um, so you can you can point out what's going on. You can you can say things need to improve, but it's also important to have gratitude in the moment that you're living. So I think within my music, I try to ensure that there's a, a sense, a level of gratitude in everything that we do. You know what I mean? Because that's important for people to understand that you got to hope for better, but in the moment you've got to you've got to find some kind of happiness and content. I think it's really important, and I think. I mean, we're in such sort of political and social chaos across the world at the minute. I mean, everything that's going on with Trump in the US to the mess that there is in my country in the UK, we won't even get started on that. Um, It's politically and socially chaotic at the minute. and And I think... I mean, I always think when I look at the sort of music that's based around based around reggae, I think it is the most important music of all time. But it's especially important at the minute because the world is such a mess and people are so kind of polarised almost that we need kind of this music more than ever now, don't you think? We need we need positive music that has a message that has a positive message of how we can unify and come together actually as a species. I mean, what did you do? You agree? Yes, I definitely think I think that I think that's and that's the the thing about about I believe it's uh, the message uh, has been the message of reggae music. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can point out the social ills, what's going on in the world, but at the end of the day, we gotta understand like that we are one people. I mean, we are one people, and we gotta work together for better. I mean, sometimes it's that's kind of a I don't the word it's, it's kind of a far fetched thing because it's you know there's so many different countries in the world and so many different ways of of seeing things. But at the end of the day, if we if we open our minds and we look at ourselves from a distance, as I say, sometimes you look at yourself from space. We so much we so close and we're so so much the same. Um, it's it's just what we feed our minds. So at the end of the day, even with myself, with everything that's going on in the world, I try to to focus. I mean, on the things which I can which I can control. In, in in a lot of times as well in in the areas which I think that I can can speak about like I can speak on I try to speak on but I, I try not to let that um, encompass my, my all my being you know what I mean I try to influence where, where I can influence and try to push for better because um, the world definitely needs it and, and 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 everything in life when you say half or half like as I said in half or half empty um, we've got to still at the end of the day although we point out the ills and hope for better and we got to take action to make change. We've still got to good, good, keep, keep that back glass half full, half full enough so we can pour into somebody else's cup. And for me, what I try to do is, um, yeah, try try to 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 to, to focus on on the positives. I try to to, to the things which can improve, I can change. You try to, to encourage that and 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 try to work towards that. But you've got to keep your glass half full um, in in order to to be able to pour into somebody else's cup and make that change. I think you're spot on. I completely agree. And the thing is, you can't also, there's there's a lot of negativity in the world and there is undoubtedly a lot of evil in the world at the minute. But you cannot defeat that with more negativity, more anger and more evil, can you? Yeah, yeah. You've got to, you've got, you've got to do your best and, and try to, 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 to try to make that change in whether it be, be through, through awareness, through consciousness, through, through sometimes people's... Um, through their conscience, sometimes you have to play on people's conscience and, and have them point the mirror, the mirror at them, and, and say, "Hey, this is what's going on. This is how you look when you do this." And a lot of times, it's ho- hopefully, sometimes it doesn't work because some people don't have a conscience. But hmm. in a lot of cases, some people do have a conscience because they've got kids, they've got family, they've got friends, and 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 I think 
in in all of in all of us humans, we've we've got something in us that want better and wants um, wants to see good done to other people, even if sometimes we forget that. No, absolutely. I can. I completely agree. And you do that in all your music, Amari. I have to say. I mean, just to, I could chat to you for ages because he, listeners, he's just as good to speak to as he is to listen to. Actually, I have to say, I could chat to you for ages, Amari. But we do need to wrap this up. I mean, you've touched on the fact that you're working on your new album. You're just about to go and do some promo work on that. What can we expect from album number three? Then is it going to be more musical diversity and more kind of creation of styles and genres? What what's in store with album number three? Well, but I mean, for me, it's hard for me not to 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 to, to get to get away from not giving you a lot of different stuff because I've been influenced by a lot of different stuff. With this album, um, I'm still I'm, I'm, you're gonna get a little bit more. Maybe I should say still you're gonna get some more, some roots stuff, some blues stuff, a, a, a bit more guitar playing because I love to play the guitar as well. That's a that's a, a key piece of my, my music. Um, but I just want to continue bringing truth, you know what I mean? Continue bringing that truth, continue bringing songs, which I believe can have a positive impact on people's lives and, and continue to, to, to delve deeper into myself. Cause I mean, as a songwriter, that's one of the things, um, which I always want to do. I want to, I want to, I want to share myself with, with, and be, and be real genuine with my songs. And, um, I'm, I'm growing on my journey in life as well. So as I grow, my music will grow. I'm having life experiences. My kids are growing older. I'm, I'm I'm looking at the world. I'm analyzing it differently. You know what I mean? I, I've I've always I think life is about growth. You don't stay one spot, but but at the end of the day, you've got to be growing to better. And um, I just want to continue to grow to better, whether it's musically, even the content what I'm putting push out there, and and just about I mean just getting closer to a place where um, I can feel like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you, you've seen that change happen, um, and and you're growing to a place where of fulfillment. So at the end of the day. I just want to keep growing and, and, and keep, keep pushing up music, which I feel people can relate to and it can change their lives in a positive way. Amari, if you haven't fully grown yet, I can't wait to see what else you've got in store then. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. It's, yeah, it's, it's always a pleasure, man. Especially speaking to you, you can, you can, you can tell that you're somebody who's, who's got your, your mind open and in the place where you want to take in that, that, that light, I mean, that you give to me. And, and so it's, it's almost like we're sharing. So it's like you're pouring into my cup, I'm pouring into your cup, and we, we're growing and we, we realize what's going on with that mutual respect. So, yeah, man, it's always a pleasure to talk to somebody who's on them same levels. Thank you. It's very kind. I appreciate you saying that. And it has been great to be able to speak to you, Mari. Absolutely, absolutely fascinating. And you are such a supremely talented artist and a fascinating artist as well. It's been an absolutely brilliant opportunity to chat to you about what you've been doing. Please come back on the show when you release your album. I definitely will. I'm, 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 I'm ready to do that. So, I mean, I, I've recorded four songs already. I've got two others in the pipeline. So that's six. And then over the next couple of months, I've got a bit more work to do, um, but I've got all the concepts already, kind of ready in my head. So, and, and for, for me, once I have the concepts done, it's just to just to pour it out like I'm pour it out of, out of my spirit. You know what I mean? Just put it on paper and, and then start to get in the studio. So, I'm really excited about this new project. I'm I'm just excited to to continue to share myself with my fans, and I mean to be able to grow. Um, my music, as as I've, as I've done over the past couple of years, I just actually came from from the U.S. East Coast. I did some stuff in St. Kitts Music Festival, um, performed with Fuji Banton. I'm in, I'm just excited to continue to push my music and get out into places, and excited to come over to the to to Europe next year. So I'm yeah ready for that. Excellent. I cannot wait. Looking forward to that and really looking forward to the new album, which hopefully will be out early next year. But for the minute, Amari Banks, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's my pleasure, my brother. That's our love. How good is Amari Banks? He is so talented. And I love, 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 love his musical style, which cannot be pinned down or boxed in. Absolutely brilliant. And moreover, what a lovely guy as well. Had a great time chatting to him. Absolutely brilliant. Here is one of the tracks we discussed in the show. It is his most recent release. This is a fantastic half full or half empty. It is Amari Banks, half full or half empty. Check this out. Let them sound them good. Never ever stop me All the criticism can't break this rasta baby Them would grudge if you've been hard working Them even grudge me face what me mommy and me daddy give But 
make me dance to the bow them for love We keep the message positive The youth we give them inspiration I know who's going to help me for those I care The others I can't see half full of half empty Alright Every day we got to live and count the blessings Free up your mind Forget about the envy Life is all about how you see things Half full or half empty Every move you make you trying to keep up with society Claiming for the system that operates on vanity Well, you never listen what your granny say Just make one one full basket Overnight and day So don't get all depressed when you make your bed You buy the pretty sheet You have to lie in it And this is just reality So change your paradigm if you can't see Half full or half empty Oh boy Every day we got to live and count the blessings Count the blessings Free up your mind Forget about the envy Trodding through this life It's all about how you see things Half full or half empty And that's it. Another special episode of Top Lung Caged is done. I'd like to thank my fantastic guest this week, the incredible Amari Banks. Follow him on Twitter. It's at Amari Banks Music. As always, fun scene. Thanks to the love of my life, the gorgeous Nicola Jeffrey. Follow her on Twitter. It's at Nicola C. Jeffrey. My man behind the booth, sound engineer Gav Pauls. Follow him on Twitter. It's at Pauls with AZ Radio. And my in-house singer, it's Ray Star Music. Follow her on Twitter. It's at Ray underscore Star 113. Thank you to the Canary for encaging me. I will see you again soon. Uncaged.